God. May you bless your word unto our hearts, O oh God, and glorify your name. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Speak, Lord, in the stillness. While we wait on thee, hush our hearts to listen in expectancy. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 It is one thing to talk about the faithfulness of God. And we should. God has been faithful to each of us and to this particular ministry here. Shalom. Missionary Church. Shalom. God's peace. God's well-being upon our lives. We should talk about that. Without God, you would not, and I would not be here today, as we shall unpack it a little bit in a moment. But God desires a particular response from us. A response that we see in this passage of scripture, and a response that we did not see in this passage of scripture. And so I want to draw out some critical lessons for us to focus on about God's faithfulness and ours from the text before us. The story was just read. The parable was just read. I said it's a kingdom parable. A parable of the kingdom, the coming of the kingdom, and the end of the time as we know it here on earth, and God calling to account his people. One man was given five talents. We're not merely talking about when they say somebody's talented and they have, um, they can sing or they can dance or they can run or they can jump. I can do all of those things myself, by the way. Some of us are multi-talented, you know. I didn't say I can sing well or dance or run. Uh, we're not really talking about it. This was a word that is used originally in reference to uh, weight, about 75 pounds, and then to money. And so the NIV very carefully says, a talent of money. One got five, one got two, and one got one. And the one that got five went and worked and improved that to five more, so he had ten. The one who got two similarly, and he ended up with four. But the person who got one decided that he was going to do anything about it. I don't really like where God has placed my church. God has placed us in a ghetto. We're not up in Norbrook or Cherry Gardens or Half a Tree or some export and place. And worse, I don't really like the fact that God has to get all his credit and I do all the work. <laughs> and so he had a very dirty, nasty, stinking attitude. Bad my language. <laughs> but that's what it was. He had a very rotten attitude. And on that rotten attitude, he, he didn't do anything about it. This betrays something about us. When I say this, I'm talking about the actual response of both these set of people. The one that got five and the one that got four. Faithful. They were co commended for being faithful. Versus the one who didn't. Betrays or says to us something about how we should respond to a, a, a faithful God. Or, or how our faithfulness comes out of. What it comes out of. Why is it that two men did something that the other didn't do? Why is it that two were faithful and the other wasn't? Wouldn't you suppose, if you read the text carefully, that if this last one were one, if you had been given a hundred talents, it would have been in the same way. Because, uh, you know, it is easy for us to think that the man acted this way because he got one and said, what a measly, stingy little talent you gave me. That was not the issue for him. He says, you don't deserve to get what you get because you didn't do the work. So even if you gave this man a thousand talents, and some of us it has nothing to do with whether you are in Grant's bed versus another kind of bed. <laughs> Faith's bed. We don't want him over in on. Catherine. March bed. 